All right, so this is a follow-off video on the replication graph uh, video that I did. And in this one, I thought I'd just talk a bit more in depth about the grid spatialization and the grid cell stuff that the replication graph does. Um, and this is probably the most important thing that the replication graph does to improve server performance. So I thought it was fitting to do more of an in-depth um, look at the, at the grid stuff and how it works. So, in order to understand how, why the uh, grid stuff, the grid spatialization is a lot more effective on uh, uh, on reducing the load on the server, we first have to look at how the legacy system handles it. Um, so basically, when you pro when you have to process replication actors to determine whether or not they're relevant or not, basically it has to get all of the actors in the world, and then it gets the location of the actor to the connection. And it from then can determine whether or not the connection is inside of the call distance um, of the actor. And then that determines if it's relevant or not to the given connection. And yeah, this is okay if you have a couple of thousands of actors, um, but it's very slow and it, and it really, it's not really good for the server CPU when it has to process this huge amount of information if you have loads of actors. So it's really going to slow your frame rate down, it's going to slow your server performance down uh, when you basically have to check all of these. If you, so imagine if you have 50,000 actors in your world, um, like Fortnite, Fortnite has, and has to check that on every single net tick. So that's really, it's really you're going to have like zero frames per second because it's just going to be slow, too slow for the server to process. And so just to give you an example, Imagine we have these different chests or uh, different replicated actors, and if I draw a connection, let's say we have our character here, which represents our connection. So no matter where the character is in the world, it's gonna have to check if every single actor in the world is if if it's relevant. So even if the character is like on the opposite side of the map, and you have like the actor up here, it's still gonna have to process and check whether or not that's relevant, even though it's almost entirely impossible, even though it's pretty much impossible for it to be relevant, but it's still gonna have to check it. So in this case, it has to check that actor, check that actor, that one, that one, and that one. And even though we know that the call distance of these are nowhere near where the connection is, we still have to process them, and so it's just so redundant, and that's why it slows down the uh, server performance. So the replication graph grid spatialization solves this by dividing the map up into these different cells, and these cells inherit from the um, replication graph uh, actor list. So they're basically just a list of actors for each one of these cells, and a connection in a given cell will only process whether or not the actor in that cell list is relevant or not. Okay, so basically it results in that we have a lot less actors that we need to process for each connection. So this yields an overall better CPU performance on the server, because the list of actors that we have to process is just a lot smaller. So if we illustrate this, we've now carved the map up into these different grids. And let's say we have a connection that's right here. Now what you'd think is that because this connection is not in the same grid cell as here, then that would not be relevant. Relevant. Then this actor would not be relevant. But that's not the case. Because imagine if you had an actor right there, and you had a connection right there. Now just because they're not in the grid, same grid cell, uh, they would not be relevant to each other. So, so that's not really how that's not really a good way of handling it. How it actually handles whether or not it's um, relevant or not is that we still have the default call distance of the actor. And now what it does is that, it, that then it finds which, which uh, of these grid cells that are inside of this call distance. And if I get my pen up. So in this case, this cell inside of this call distance. This cell is inside of this call distance. This one. That one. This one. 
this one and this one. So now, now all of these grid cells that I've now highlight, highlighted are going to have this actor in their replication in their actor list. Now that does not mean that this actor is relevant just because it's inside of this actor list, because it is still going to check the call distance of this uh, actor. However, basically the idea of this is that we don't have to check as many actors. Uh, and we're now only checking call distances for an actor if it's even possible for it to be relevant or not. So if only if it's close to the actor, then we check call distance. But so so that way we don't have to process call distance for an actor that's just so far away from the actor, like if they're on opposite sides of the map. And um, so that so that way the list of actors that has to be processed for a specific connection is, is a lot less. And so this is how we can achieve a, a better um, performance on the server by using the uh, grid spatialization stuff for the um, for the server. So um, let's say we have a connection right here. Now this connection does not process call distance relevancy for uh, for this actor. However, if it moves into this grid. It now does process it, but it's not still relevant because it's not inside of the call distance. And now if it's right in here, then it processes call distance and it's inside of the call distance and it's now relevant. This actor is now relevant for this connection. And the final thing I thought I'd talk about is um, frequency buckets for each one of these different uh, grids. So this is a bit more complex, but basically it's an it's, it's an additional way of improving um, improving uh, performance on the server, and basically what it does is that it improves performance by splitting the non-streaming actor list of a cell into these different buckets, um, and replication will be pulled from each bucket on alternating frames. So imagine we split the replication list of a specific cell into three, then and it's going to divide that up into three different frames. And the first frame is going to process the first bucket, the second frame, the second bucket, and the third frame, the uh, third bucket. So we basically even out the load and even out processing of the actors across different frames in order to impro improve um, performance. And uh, these frequency bucket stuff and the setting for all this can be found in the uh, grid spatialization uh, the grid in in each one of these grid cells in the grid spatialization. So what I thought I'd do now is to show you how you can actually set the um, cell stuff. So I have some code. Uh, I have a project up here, and what I'll do is I'll go application graph h. And I'll find that. Okay. Oh. Oh god. There it is. Okay. So we have this here, and if we go to replication graph node underscore grid cell, which is one of these cells that's stored in the uh, grid spatialization node. Um, and let's see where that is. Okay, so here's one of the grid cells that's stored inside of the um, grid spatialization 2D node, which I showed you how to set up and create uh, previously. So there's supposed to be, here we go, here's the actual grid, uh, which stores all of these different grid cells, as you can see, and there's a bunch of helper functions that you can use. And now if we go and look inside of the grid cell, there's a thing here called a dynamic node, and there's a thing called create dynamic node override, which is basically a function that you can pass in some sort of like a delegate style 
uh, from C sharp. Then you have the get dynamic node, and if we go into the implementation of that, if you do not specify a function to override, or if you do not specify a function to override, then it will by default create a actor list frequency buckets um, child node for each one of the grid cells. And you can create your own node by simply um, using this thing here. So if we go into this, what we can see here is we have the we have the settings or the buckets as a non buckets list size and it's also a fast path, uh shared fast path, which I'll probably go into another video about but it's basically how you can share information quickly. Uh, I think it's documented somewhere in the uh, CPP file of the replication graph, but basically in order to set things like this, you um, because it's static, you can simply go, uh, oh god, let's say, let's say I have a replication graph uh, here, and I'll just go like this, and then here you can specify your different settings. Let's say it is by default three of this, but let's say you want four buckets, then you can spec you can handle it that way. And that's basically how you set up the um, actor list for the frequency or the frequency buckets for each one of the uh, each one of the grid cells, which you probably will want to handle in any global graph nodes after you create the grid spatialization cell, and you probably want to initialize it there. Um, so yeah, that's. Basically, all I wanted to explain, it's a bit of a shorter video, but I mostly just wanted to explain a bit how the grid stuff works, because it's pretty important to understand, and it's pretty easy to get confused about how it works, uh, especially, as I said, a lot of people seem to think that just because it's in a different cell, then uh, the connection will only process, or will only be relevant to, an actor will only be relevant to a specific yeah, connection in the same cell, which is not how it works, so... But I cleared that up. Anyways, if you have any questions or comments, then please leave them below. I'll try to I'll try to reach back to you. Uh, anyways, have a great day.